Here's the problem. You create styles for a project that already has a lot of content. And most pages look like this. Header at the top, content in the middle, and footer at the bottom. But then you find a page that doesn't have a lot of content, and footer almost jumps to the top of the page. In this video, I'll show you how to fix it so you can start using this approach in your project. And if you already know how to build this layout, I suggest you still stick around because we'll cover common mistakes that a lot of engineers make. Let's start with HTML. Pretty basic structure. The only interesting part here is that I usually put side div as a direct child of the body. And I do it for one reason. Sometimes third party tools and scripts inject their code right before the closing body tag. And that code can interfere with your layout. So to avoid that, we encapsulate our layout in this side div. Not a requirement, just the practice that I usually follow. Inside we have the header, main, and footer elements. Now, believe it or not, in order to make this work, we only need four lines of CSS. We add this to our project. And now, regardless of how tall or short the page is, the footer will stay at the bottom. Now, let's break the styles down because I think it's very important to understand what each line of code does. So first of all, we set min height of the site to 100% dynamic viewport height units. And first thing you may have noticed that I'm not setting any kind of height on body or HTML elements. And that's correct. With this approach, this is not required because the default height value of HTML and body is auto meaning they will both expand as necessary to account for the height of the inner elements, in this case, site element. Display grid, pretty obvious. The site element becomes a grid. Now for the next line, we're creating three rows here. Header and footer are set to auto to make sure that they take as much space as necessary, uh, depending on how much content is inside. And for the main content, we set it to one fraction unit, which makes it expand if there is available space after it took all the necessary space that's needed for its content. Next line is extremely important, even though it looks like it doesn't do anything. If I remove it right now, layout stays the same. But setting a single column layout here to min max 01 FR prevents this page from scrolling horizontally in case there is content inside that's wider than the screen. I also have a video that describes this behavior in detail that I'll include as a link on the screen. Another mistake I see people make with this layout is setting HTML body and site element height to 100%. And you actually might get away with this mistake and not face any issues, but here's why it's not ideal. If we set it to 100%, we're changing the implicit height of those elements. Here's what I mean. Let's open the inspector and see how tall the page is. The HTML is 2,682 pixels. The body element is the same and the site is the same. Now, if I change it to 100%, it becomes 557. We still can scroll the page and it still works fine. Visually, nothing changed and the footer actually stays at the bottom but the height of the HTML, the body and the site element is different now. And I had an issue with this once where I was using an animation library that was relying on the height of the HTML to be unchanged. And it was really hard to debug because it caused unexpected behavior. So there you have it, a quick CSS tip on how to keep your footer at the bottom of the page. Now I have to make a note that this approach works if the header stays at the top of the page and is not sticky. So we might cover how to adjust it for sticky headers in one of the next videos. So stick around and I'll see you in the next one.